Tonight was the first round of the second series of Democratic presidential debates. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Of course, just because it was the Democrats' big night doesn't mean Donald Trump could stay out of the news. In fact, he's physically incapable of it. I'm shocked he didn't crash through the wall of the debate stage in his golf cart. <laughs> Trump, as usual, spent the morning screaming at the TV all day on Twitter, ranting about everything from his racist attacks on Baltimore to trade to morning talk shows to a possible infrastructure bill, tweeting, do I hear the beautiful word bipartisan? I don't know. Do you? Let's listen. In a few moments, I will sign a bar bipartisan bill. Of course, a bar partisan is someone <laughs> who only votes while drunk. Okay, now how do I get out of this booth? <laughs> also, how do you mess up the word bipartisan? It's like the most popular word in politics. That's like messing up the word Congress or lawmakers. Lawmakers. <laughs> All right. All right, all right. <laughs> Trump was also asked today if his racist attacks on Congressman Elijah Cummings in Baltimore were part of some sort of calculated political strategy, which is both clearly not true and also doesn't matter. It's just who Trump is. He's a racist. It's how he sees the world. And when he was asked today if it was some sort of grand strategy, he said this. There's no strategy. I have no strategy. There's zero strategy. That would be an accurate Trump response to literally any question. <laughs> Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump, when you stand up straight, are you intentionally puffing your chest out like an angry kangaroo? I have no I stand like this. I stand like this because my bones are hollowed out from the Diet Coke. In fact, today was a day of seemingly accidental confessions from Trump because he was also asked by reporters about a bipartisan election security bill that Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is blocking. Trump tried to defend McConnell from accusations that he's essentially aiding Russia, but I don't think Trump's comment was helpful. Mitch McConnell is a man that knows less about Russia and Russian influence than even Donald Trump, and I know nothing. I agree. I mean, this is a crazy day. And again, an answer that could work for literally any question. <laughs> After his presidency is over and they haul him in on obstruction of justice charges, he's going to be sitting in an interrogation room telling the cops, it was all Mike Pence's idea. I know nothing. <laughs> all of this is why whatever you think of the Democrats, it was a relief and a change of pace to at least hear a bunch of people who can speak in coherent sentences about actual policies. The only time Elizabeth Warren's ever been a bar partisan is when she drank a beer that one time on Instagram Live. <laughs> Now, Warren was one of the leading contenders coming into tonight's debate, along with her close ideological ally and longtime friend Bernie Sanders. And coming into the debate tonight, there were a lot of questions about how they'd handle their friendship. The media couldn't help but speculate. Would they go after each other? Or would they team up to go after the moderates on stage? Tonight, the, the frontrunners in the center of the stage are going to be Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. And one of the big questions is their political allies, will they go after each other? They kind of seem to have a pact that they won't go after each other. Does that pact live through the evening? They are seen as competing for some of the same voters. So does she try to create some differentiation with Senator Sanders, or does she focus on Joe Biden or do a different thing? I think Sanders and Warren are mo more likely to team up against some of the more moderate candidates on stage. That's right. They should team up like a wrestling duo. Warren could start by giving a lengthy explanation for her plan for a wealth tax on assets over $50 million, and then Bernie could tag in and hit a billionaire over the head with a chair. <laughs> and then there was the rest of the field. Everyone was looking for their moment to stand out, and there were big questions for each of them. Questions like, who the hell are these guys? <laughs> would Beto bust out his Spanish again? And since Cory Booker wasn't on stage, would he make this face at home? <laughs> would Tim Ryan get caught touring the debate stage again, looking like a pledge from Sigma Chi? And would Marianne Williamson explode into a thousand butterflies that spell out the word love? <laughs> and then once the debate got started, CNN chose to have the candidates come on stage individually for intros, like they were the original Star Trek cast at Comic-Con. <laughs> and while some candidates obviously had big fan bases, others got more muted reactions. Senator Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Senator Elizabeth Warren. 
Mayor Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> Former Congressman John Delaney. Oh, man, what a bummer for that guy to have to follow Warren Buttigieg and Bernie. It's like if Springsteen, Bono, and the Rolling Stones all opened a concert and then they were followed by a Weezer cover band. <laughs> hey, how you guys doing tonight? Hey, one more time for Mick Jagger. <laughs> CNN spent what seemed like an eternity going through the rigmarole of all the intros, the color guard, the national anthem, and then after all that, Elizabeth Warren returned the opening kickoff for a 99-yard touchdown. And then there was still more because they also had opening statements. We didn't even get to our first question until about 25 minutes in. You could have just watched an entire episode of Veep. In fact, I'm pretty sure anyone on Veep would have had a better chance of getting elected than this guy. I mean, what, what is this guy doing here? And where's Gromit? Of course, we did get the benefit of an opening statement from Marianne Williamson, who right off the bat made it weird with her word choice. In 1776, our founders brought forth on this planet an extraordinary new possibility. On this planet? <laughs> to be clear, on the planet I'm from, you can only vote if you've gathered enough moon crystals to please the ancient oracle. <laughs> and then the Democrats immediately got into it, with the moderators asking Bernie to respond, to former Congressman John Delaney's criticisms of his Medicare for All plan. You support Medicare for All, which would eventually take private health insurance away from more than 150 million Americans in exchange for government-sponsored health care for everyone. Congressman Delaney just referred to it as bad policy, and previously he has called the idea political suicide that will just get President Trump reelected. What do you say to Congressman Delaney? You're wrong. <laughs> Such a quick answer. <laughs> Bernie said that like he's definitely used those words before. Sir, you ordered the lobster bisque. You're wrong. <laughs> I ordered the chicken soup, and I want those crackers. Crackers for all. <laughs> and then, after Delaney and others accused Bernie and Warren of trying to make private health insurance illegal, Warren stepped in to stop the bickering. Let's be clear about this. We are the Democrats. We are not about trying to take away health care from anyone. That's what the Republicans are trying to do. And we should stop using Republican talking points in order to talk with each other about how to best provide that health care. Elizabeth Warren will turn this car around right now, and nobody's going to Disneyland. <laughs> Bernie and Warren had standout moments, and Bernie seemed especially feisty early on. He was shouting over the moderators when they interrupted him, taking on the moderates like Delaney, and landing a big blow against Congressman Tim Ryan. Senator Warren, it's your turn. Oh, can I complete that, please? And your time is up, they 30 seconds. They will be seconds. advertising tonight with that talking point. On the Medicare for all, the hospitals will save substantial sums of money because they're not going to be spending a fortune doing billing and the other bureaucratic things that they have to do today. I've done Second the of all, maybe you did that and made money off of health care, but our job is to run a nonprofit health care <laughs> system. Medicare for all is comprehensive. It covers all health care needs for senior citizens. It will finally include dental care, hearing aids, and eyeglasses. But you don't know Second that. of all, you don't know that, second Bernie. of all, we'll come I, to second I do know when I wrote the damn bill. <laughs> damn. Tim Ryan better hope Medicare for All passes, because he's going to need some health care for that burn. <laughs> Bernie scared him so bad, Ryan turned white as a sheet 40 years ago. <laughs> Tim Ryan got owned so hard, his hat flew back onto his head. <laughs> you know Bernie was waiting for that moment. To be challenged on a bill you wrote is a politician's dream. It's like if J.K. Rowling was on Jeopardy and one of the categories was boy wizards. <laughs> But it seemed like all the moderates wanted a shot at Warren or Bernie tonight. At one point, they debated the question of whether a self-described Democratic Socialist like Bernie could take on Trump, and former Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper even tried to mock Bernie's mannerisms, which only encouraged Bernie. So, again, I, I think if we're going to force Americans to make these radical changes, they're not going to go along. You, you Throw your hands up. But you, right. you haven't... <laughs> oh, I can do it. I feel like that's... The first and only time John Hickenlooper has said, throw your hands up! <laughs> and don't challenge Bernie to pull a Bernie. <laughs> oh, and let me guess, you're gonna do that thing with your finger. Okay, I will do it, and I'm gonna point it right at you. 
And then when the moderates kept challenging Warren on her plans, claiming her ideas were either impossible or politically impractical, she delivered what seemed like a thesis statement for her candidacy and for the night. You know, I don't understand why anybody goes to all the trouble of running for president of the United States just to talk about what we really can't do and shouldn't fight for. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's the point of running for president if all your positions are about stuff you can't do? It's like if Ronald Reagan had said, Mr. Gorbachev, make this wall a little shorter. One of the one of the flashpoints, one of the flashpoints in this divide between the progressives and the moderates was the climate crisis. The candidates disagreed over ambitious proposals like the Green New Deal, and again, Ryan tried to take on Bernie. What do you do with an industry that knowingly, for billions of dollars in short-term profits, is destroying this planet? I say that is criminal Thank activity. You. That cannot be allowed Thank to Thank you, continue. Senator well, Sanders. Congressman, your response. Well, yeah, I would, I would just say, I didn't say we couldn't get there till 2040, Bernie. You don't have to yell. Oh, no, he, he absolutely does have to yell. <laughs> Bernie's been kicked out of every library in Vermont. <laughs> He's like the bus from Speed. If he goes under 100 decibels, his hair will explode. <laughs> this debate basically seemed like a bunch of moderates trying to take on Warren and Bernie, and... Warren and Bernie teaming up to fend them off. It was like watching Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen take on the Washington Generals. In fact, at one point, John Delaney was again called on to debate Warren over her proposal to impose a wealth tax on assets over $50 million. And she managed to debate Delaney just with her facial expressions. We can raise the capital gains rate to match the ordinary income. You know the last president to do that was actually Ronald Reagan. We can do that in our first year. I've called for that to be done, and it'll double the earned income tax credit. I've called for the expansion of universal pre-K so that every American has pre-K. Damn. Even when she's not talking, she's winning. It's like when you're on the subway next to a crazy guy and you try to signal your friend you want to move without talking. <laughs> also, look at how she rubs her hands when the wealth tax comes up. Your estimated net worth is more than $65 million. That would make you subject to Senator Warren's proposed wealth tax on the assets of the richest 75,000 homes, households, or so in the United States. I mean, she was like J.K. Rowling if the final Jeopardy category was boy wizards. And then, of course, there was Marianne Williamson again, who gave this answer on the Flint water crisis. Flint is just the tip of the iceberg. I was recently in Denmark, South Carolina, where it is, there is a lot of talk about it being the next Flint. We, we have an administration that has gutted the Clean Water Act. We have communities, particularly communities of color and disadvantaged communities all over this country, who are suffering from environmental injustice. I assure you, I lived in Gross Point. What happened in Flint would not have happened in Gross Point. This is part of the dark underbelly of American society. Wait, was that good? <laughs> is Marianne Williamson like one of those albums you have to listen to a couple of times before you figure out what they were trying to do? <laughs> is Marianne Williamson jazz? <laughs> Let's hear some more. You can't fight dog whistles. You have to override them. And the only way you can override them is with new voices, voices of energy that only come from the fact that America has been willing to live up to our own mistakes, atone for our own mistakes, make amends for our own mistakes, love each other, love our democracy, love future generations. OK, I think I'm going to put this album away. <laughs> But there were a couple things that were a little odd about how this debate was conducted. For one thing, they kept giving so much time to John Delaney, a guy who's polling at less than 1%. Congressman Delaney, Congressman so Delaney, Congressman Delaney, Congressman Delaney, Congressman Delaney, your response. Congressman Delaney, I'll start with you. Congressman Delaney, your response. Congressman Delaney. Congressman Delaney, I'm coming to you now. Why do they keep asking him to chime in? He's polling within the margin of error. He's not going to win. <laughs> It's like going to a Maroon 5 concert if Adam Levine kept going, all right, now time for another drum solo. <laughs> and Delaney wasn't the only also ran who got more stage time than he probably should have. There was also Tim Ryan, who for some reason always seemed surprised when they toss him a question. I want to uh, go to Congressman Ryan, and I want to turn to the subject uh, of North Korea. I mean, my goodness, he looks like a long-haul trucker desperately fighting to stay awake. <laughs> 130 miles to Tulsa, maybe if I... 
take off one shoe. <laughs> Ultimately, this was a deeply substantive debate that showcased genuine differences among the candidates on key policy questions. And no matter what you think of any of them, eventually, one of them's gonna go up against a guy whose campaign slogan is basically... I know nothing. This has been a closer look.